What's up, Grace Girls? Welcome to the Allow Yourself Grace podcast, where we focus on helping black women change their lives by discarding negative thoughts, pivoting in the right direction, and shifting their mindset through cultivating a trauma-free lifestyle. I'm your host, Courtney Kristen, educator, content creator, life coach, counselor, and mental health enthusiast living in Houston, Texas. I created the Allow Yourself Grace podcast because I wanted to create a space for black women to share their thoughts, feelings, and stories that make them who they are without fear of judgment. Allow Yourself Grace provides emotional support and encouragement within the Grace Girls community for women in need of non-biased opinions from women other than family and friends. Personal development, self-care, career, faith, are among many of the topics we will discuss on this platform. Allow Yourself Grace podcast is here to encourage black women to live unapologetically and thrive in being authentically who they are and were designed to be an entire vibe. No topics are off limits. We will cover it all. Now grab a notebook, pen, sit back and enjoy the show. All right. What's up? What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Allow Yourself Grace podcast. Super excited to have you guys back. I have another guest in the house. Y'all, I'm so excited. I've been following this guest on Instagram for a little bit. She's amazing. She's doing a lot of great things. Um, I'm going to let her introduce herself, as I always do, because we want to hear all the credentials. Um, So, yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So I am Holly Cotton and I am a nurse, author, life coach, speaker, media personality, mom, all that great stuff. So that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. So tell us where you're from. So I'm originally from Louisiana. I'm from a city called Homa, which is about 30 miles south of New Orleans and um, just country girl. And I moved from um, from home at 17, went to LSU on a scholarship because I'm smart too. Uh, and then after that, after college, I moved to DC for a few years. And then I've been in Houston for um, almost 20 years now. Awesome. 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 Um, so as y'all can see, Miss Holly here is into fitness. Um, so that's kind of how I found her on Instagram is because, you know, you're always looking for people like, okay, I need to follow some of their workouts. I need to see what they're doing. Um, so that's kind of how I stumbled up on her. But as you can see from what she said there's so many other aspects and things to her as a person and so I love that I love that I love that and she's all about empowering women so I want to talk about your new book that you have out um somebody's wife or or not um can you kind of tell us how you came up with that title first off (laughs) yeah I would love to so my my whole everything that I'm doing in 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 about empowering people and in all of that is is about is about uh oh, hold on I'm trying to do do not disturb okay thank you um I hate when you turn it off yeah. on your phone and, and it's still and every watch. other thing dang mm-hmm. that um so everywhere I looked when I was I'm talking about self love empowering people it's always this push to uh be married. Be someone's right. wife. Do right. this. How to get the man. How to catch the whatever. How to uh, w- mm-hmm. whatever. Like Steve Harvey's book. Every you know, think like a man. So there are so many things that are telling people how to get a partner. And what it does is it puts these unrealistic expectations. Yes. It causes people to stay in situations longer than they should, and it causes people to settle. Um, you start getting lonely. So now you're making decisions based off of emotions. And I was like, you know what? Okay, I've I've done the first book. I've done the second book. How to do your goal? Like I was like, this time I want to come out because no one is is there talking to the people who you can't get someone. You can't find someone. Someone uh, recently was a uh, they were widowed. Their their spouse just died on them, and now they're back in the single world. So it doesn't matter how you get to single life because you sometimes don't have a control right. over it, but there's no resources for those people. So that's why I was like, you know what? I'm going to write a book about self-love, about healing, because I was married for 17 years also. 
And so I know, you know, I've been a wife. I've done right. that. I've, I've, I've been in the relationship. I have that experience. And then when I was single, I was like, wow, like everybody's like, well, you know, when you going to get married again or what you going to, you know, yes. and it's like so many questions yes. about that. All the and, questions and, no one wants to answer. Like, yes. And I'm like, listen, not everyone wants to be right. somebody's wife, right. you know, because of course there's dear future wifey. Right. There's all these other podcasts yes. that, about getting it. And again, I wanted to write a book about self love because of course if there wasn't the desire to have companionship, there wouldn't be a thousand resources mm-hmm. about it. So of course everybody That's wants true. to have someone. Let's be realistic. Being single, right. you know, you got needs, you yes. lonely, you know. So there wouldn't yes. be all of these toxic and negative behaviors if it wasn't a re- reality. So, but while you're in the single chapter, mm-hmm. I wanted to have resources for people about how do you do that? You know, how do you take a step one? How do you find find yeah. time to do that. So that's kind of like what my book is. It's about discovering self-love and single life. Yeah. I think that's so great because like you said, a lot of people stay in relationships because they don't feel like they love themselves. They want to feel like somebody's there for them or they just want to have that person. Like we all know those people that are in relationships and you're like, why are you, are you still, still there? there? And I have some real life yeah. examples in it too. So it's funny because I have a, a, my friends are like, oh my God, you didn't put me. I was like, no, I'm no, not, gonna I'm not know. Gonna put your business. Yeah, there. no one's going to know it was you. <laughs> right. Um, but I did want it to, I did want to also, because I, I hate whenever I'm reading a self-help mm-hmm. book and it's just like, you got to do this. You got to do it's this. Just steps. And, yes. And I'm like, okay, but what is that? So I like, in my book, I like, of course, I wrote it, so I'm biased. But I like that I have like real life things. Yeah. I talk about like, okay, so let me give you a situation. Picture it, you know. It makes it more interesting, yeah, though. and more relatable. Yeah. yeah, and then now I can now I can hit you with the moral of the story mm-hmm. rather than you know, yeah, me just barking out. Yes, love yourself. Focus on, you know, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm yeah. like, girl, let me tell you what had happened was, and I have men and women in the story. So whether you're a man or a woman, I mm, wanted my book to be able like to go that. to both too, because men, y'all out here struggling too. Oh, the men are struggling. I just told my husband yesterday, um, we had a conversation with some guys that were here. They were recording their podcast and they talked about relationships. They're young because they're like 23. So oh, I thought yeah. their conversation was hilarious. Yeah. But one of the things I, I got from the conversation is that men are very emotional. Like they're Mm -hmm. they're actually they say we're emotional but they're pretty like they hold on to stuff yes and so Mm -hmm. i think they want that affirmation from women like Mm -hmm. hey you look good Hey, they want it. They don't yeah, say it, but right. they want it too. And so I think that's awesome that. Well, and that's what I also like. I have a little. Uh, I have like a little part in one one of my chapters, and I talk about submission. Mm-hmm. And you know, because that's a big thing for people, and and they're like, well, yes. I want the person to submit, and it's different for men, and it's different for women. Right. But I have in there whenever whenever you're talking about why when you're not going to do something, you have to look at what it is that the reasons why you're not going to do it. And a lot of times you're like, like the men will say, well, I'm never going to take care of a woman again, or I'm not giving a woman no money, or I'm not mm-hmm. doing this. But what happened is <laughs> what, what is the behavior? It's because you had a situation where Come someone, on, didn't, experience. Where someone yes. didn't appreciate what you did. Yes. So it made you feel used. So now you're taking that toxic behavior into your next companionship. We're not even, True. we don't even get to the relationship or like companionship. And now you're like, well, I'm not taking care of a woman because, but, or, or a, a woman, well, I'm not, I'm not going to be with a man that does, doesn't do this True. or is not a gentleman or whatever. But what is it that we're really talking about? Because when you were with someone, and they didn't open the door for you or they mm-hmm. didn't do it. You felt like you weren't protected or maybe you didn't feel respected. So there's all these things that you have to look at what makes you have these. I'm not doing this yes. anymore. And men are being on that. Like, well, no, yeah. what is going, what's really the reason why Cause someone made you feel that way, but not everyone's going to make you feel that way. That is so true. And I think taking that time during your singleness to do it is what this book is about. <laughs> like, right. it teaches you how to do that right. from, from what I'm getting from her. Yeah. And it's just like, people don't take those moments. It's like, you have the people who jump from relationship to relationship. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it's like, dang, did you even like heal, figure out what happened in the last one? I have some life examples in yeah. here about it because even me, I got like divorced at the same time as, as a girlfriend and she, it was like six months later, she was already moving oh, some wow. guy in and I started looking at myself like, well, dang, what am what I doing wrong? Like, should I be? But then I realized that for me, I wanted to heal because I admit as as this healing person because you're never really mm-hmm. healed it's a day-to-day process some days you feel healed some days you mm-hmm. feel still messed up so when I was going through that I was like I like the healing me and I I like taking that time because I was like wow I really didn't do certain things in my marriage that I should have or right. there were triggers that happened that made me shut down or there were things I felt lonely. But you hear the word I when you speak. I hear you say I, I, I. That's the problem, though. Mm -hmm. People don't take accountability. Right. So I think that accountability piece is missing. Mm -hmm. It's because we want to play the blame game. Yeah. Oh, I blame you. Oh, I still blame you. You know, there's some things that, you know, I could have done right. differently had you acted right. right. I, no, no, no. Right. You got your shit together. Right. No. Then I would have yeah, acted right. No, but but I do know there were yeah. certain things that where I probably wasn't the mm-hmm. best person. And, 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 you know, I mean, we all have little things. Right. No, we do. Yeah. Especially do. being a strong woman. And, and, and again, it's those behaviors because what happens is we have to have to adapt to whatever situation we're in. Mm-hmm. So if that's a marriage where you're constantly feeling like you're on the defense, now all of a sudden I have to start having this shield yep. up because you're going to hurt me if I don't, if I don't do this or if I allow myself to be vulnerable. Right. So now I can't be the person right. that I am now because, the, you know, right. No, whatever. that's yeah. true. No, definitely true. And I love the relationship topics that ladies always love when we talk about relationships, mm-hmm. but if you don't mind me asking, yeah, sure. what do you think was the final piece to you saying, I'm done with the 17 year marriage? So I always tell people I had the longest breakup mm-hmm. ever. Like we, oh, literally, okay, okay. we literally like broke up for 10 years. Oh, wow. Not that okay. long, but I'm just saying it was, yeah. you know, we, we broke up and then you feel that loss. Mm-hmm. So then you think you can get back together and, we and then you realize yeah. that, mm, no, I was just horny or I right. just was lonely. Right. Whatever, and then yeah. you know that you know whatever because we had a great sex life when we had sex so of course you know it's like easier to go back it's to that what you're comfortable with yeah right. so it's right. easier to go back than to just mm-hmm. you know keep going and finding new people and then sometimes it's not even worth then you like, like you know what i could have stayed wasting my time, time. <laughs> just went back with you. So I think it was, it's just that process. Uh, and, and I got to the point where I started realizing because 2018 is when I wrote my first book. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, even going back and forth with him and still having communication and, you know, him feeling like me writing a book was, was taking, uh, time from him, Uh attention from him. And I just got to that point. I was like, you know what? I meant to do something great in life and I cannot be with someone who doesn't support me and somebody's made- <laughs> wife or not. <laughs> and, I made a, and I made the decision and I wrote my first book strong more than muscles. And it got like, I, it was a, a bestseller. It's, you know, doing all of this. Love it. And I was like, had I stayed in that relationship where I wasn't being, nurtured and and allowed to grow i would have stayed you know it's almost like the koi fish you put it in a little yep. fish tank it stays small but you put them in in the actual koi pond they're like huge right so that's where i am i'm a i'm a koi and i'm growing that was a great <laughs> analogy i love that no that's but that's something that women need to hear is that you know if you're somewhere that you're not growing mm-hmm. and you're somewhere where someone can't support your dreams just like you're supporting theirs then it's probably not a good fit because you're never going to live up to your full potential. And I think that's part of empowering women to be the best version of themselves. I think the most secure man is the man who can handle me being bigger than him. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, because he knows I have that much potential. Oh, and let me tell you, I get, let me get comfortable. (laughs) Let me get comfortable. So I get asked about that all Mm -hmm. the time. I literally just got, someone sent me a a message um, on Instagram. It was like this long. So so talking, talking about on the phone, you know how long it is. And he had this whole paragraph and he was like, um, he was like, so as a, as a woman doing the things you're doing, a lot of men will find you intimidating. Come on, here we go. (laughs) 
I hear this a lot. I'm listening. <laughs> and so a lot of men uh, may find you intimidating. And are you willing to be with someone who's not giving uh, or who is not performing at 200 mm-hmm. percent like you? And my answer is no, no, I'm not. Mm-hmm. Because I literally in three years went from just being a regular nurse to growing a brand to doing all of this. How are you not capable of it? So for me to be compatible and the people that I have right now that I am dating are all high achievers. They're very supportive. They push me to do more because I'm like, wow, you know, whatever. So, so I, I'm like, no, I'm not. I can't just be with someone who's not. And, and again, I don't care what your, career is Mm -hmm. I need your grind to match my come on come on why is it that you're sending me messages that I'm not uh, you haven't talked to me all day why are why are you sending why do you have so much downtime why you got so much time I don't have a problem checking in hey how you doing text text me a heart do whatever I'm thinking Mm -hmm. of you hey boo miss you miss you but as far as to be able to sit around and sit on the phone for hours a day I don't and I'm not so you know like Let's yeah. be real here. I'm you can't, no, you you can't get a quality and you're not quality. Come on now. It. I love it. I love it. I have a single friend and that was one of her issues. So she's on these online dating platforms and the guy's like, You're not texting me back. You know, you're not like, aren't you doing something? That's what I'm like. I'm, I'm, I'm busy, bro. I'm busy. I'm like, why are you not busy? busy? Right. Why aren't you busy? Like, come on, single people. And that, people always think that you're lonely because having standards means that you're you you are um like you're you're desperate to date Mm because of whatever and you're and and i'm like let me get let me get y'all straight first of all every woman has options it just depends on what you want to have are you settling whatever don't get it twisted every woman has an option of who she wants to be with okay nobody's ever desperate right so if you're a woman and you feel like you have no options you do um Mm -hmm. so let's get that out of the way first but you know it's just like that whole thought process and 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 just being able to know that you're not settling that's that's the biggest thing and i talk about alone versus lonely Mm -hmm. in my book don't let loneliness come on make you go into situations you shouldn't be in because I can be alone and I am fine. I love traveling by myself. I love the peace because I'm constantly, everything I'm doing, even mm. my job as a nurse, I'm always taking care of somebody's problem. Right. So for me to go to the beach in Mexico and be by myself for two You're days, good with that. I'm good with that because I'm right. going to meet people there, first of all, but right. two, I'm totally fine. So you have to be able to figure out how to be okay with being alone and not letting those times of loneliness make you choose certain things because that's loneliness is based off of emotion mm-hmm. alone is based off of physical situational yeah so don't let those emotional things cause you to be in something you shouldn't be in. yeah because a lot of y'all are in these situations <laughs> <now. Y'all out laughs> um, so what do you think it takes to be a successful woman in today's society like to balance all the things. Cause you know, there may be women watching and they're like, Oh, she's doing all these things and she has time to work out. Like she has time to do all this stuff. How is she doing this stuff? That's what I'm saying. Like, how is she doing this stuff? They want to know. So, you know, I always ask people that because it's like, everybody has a different regimen. Everybody has a different plan, but like, is there any advice you could offer? So my philosophy in life period Mm -hmm. is you create the life that you want. And every day I get up and that's why I wrote my second book, day one, a guide to identifying, organizing, and executing any goal, because I had, I picked up along my, after my first book, I started getting into these new circles and I started being exposed to different people that were at high performing levels. And I was like, holy crap, like I need to get it together. So when I wrote that book, I talk about proximity, daily habits. Um, you know, who are you, who are, who do you have in your circle? Who's, who's pushing you to do better? And even if you don't have anyone, 
you are the person that you wake up next to every day. So mm-hmm. as soon as I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is look at my calendar, see what I have to do. And I make a to-do list mm-hmm. every morning I'm in the bed. I don't, I, you know, I'm like, now I'm, of course I'm gonna post a funny meme on Instagram, mm-hmm. but social media, I, I don't, I'm not just like, because even if I'm on TikTok for like five minutes, my first thought after I'm like, no, I just wasted five minutes on TikTok. I could have been doing something else. You could have been making your own content. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I tell myself. Yes, but that's what <laughs> I'm saying. Like, oh. But it's it's our mindset. Mm-hmm. And 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 I was I was at a conference one time and and the guy said, only you are standing in the way of you being mm-hmm. great. And I I really took that to heart. And so for me, it's like I there is no option but for me to succeed. Like there is no other option. It's I'm going to make it yeah, yeah, like it's just not. And the thing is, is that you you hear all of these these inspirational speakers talking, and they're like, when your job gives you a deadline at five o'clock, you figure out how to make it work. Whenever you have to, your kids need to be at two different places at the same time. You figure out how mm-hmm. to make it work. But when it comes to us and our lives and the things that we're passionate about, oh, well, I don't need to go to the gym today. Oh, well, I guess I'll have to miss it. Oh, well, oh, I can't do I this. I don't have time. Yeah, I don't have time. Yep. Or, or yeah, and I get so many people, especially now with time. this book, because everyone's like, oh my God, I, I wanted to write a book. Can I get, can I talk to you? Or how do, how can I write a book? Mm-hmm. First of all, then I'll reach out to them and I'm like, sure, you know, let me know whatever. They may not reach back out or, um, or they'll like, and I'm like, I'm not going to get in your head and have you do it. I mm-hmm. literally, what I, I put my, I said, June 1st, I want my books to be on all platforms by June 1st. And so it was like already the end of May, I was like right on time. And then the global distribution was holding me back. Um, cause I, the ISBN number was wrong or whatever, but anyway, so it was a technical mm-hmm. issue. It wasn't me. Put, put it down, yeah. hold yourself accountable and know that if you don't make it work, it ain't happening. And mm-hmm. I think that's the problem. People think someone's going to save them. Come or, on, a magic. Or, <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, you here. can't, life is not that way. Yeah, no one's coming to save you. No one gives a crap about what you want to do. Come no on. one cares about your goals. Yep. So and and again, um, I I was in the, in a room one time with someone, and he, and he said, "Be obnoxious with your goals. Wow. People will come around." And no one thought about like three years ago. Nobody could care less. I came up with a company, mm-hmm. Strong Squad. They're like, "Oh, all right, yeah, I get a T-shirt, whatever." Oh, you wrote a book. Oh, okay. Now you see me on a billboard in Times Square, yeah. and you're like. she's really really doing something she's really doing it I was like I'm like be obnoxious they'll come around be in their face everyone else is obnoxious why are you not yeah I I came up with a quote and my husband's like we didn't put that on a shirt I'm like consistency kills critics Mm -hmm. like the more consistent you are and they start to see your progress right and now it's like oh that oh that's Holly oh wow and people don't believe it it yeah people don't believe uh, believe in you until you are successful at whatever yeah. it is that you're doing. Very true. So you're, so that's the big thing. People always say, well, no one's supporting me. No one's supporting me. But, but if you don't believe in you, right. how do you expect me to? And I say that all the time because people are like, oh my God, like you grew a brand and you do this or whatever. And, and I want to do that. Okay. Well be obnoxious. Show me that you're putting in the work. Mm-hmm. Show me that you're doing, I don't have a problem networking and doing whatever, but I'm not going to just put you on. This is grind. This is yes. me up till two and three o'clock in the morning every freaking and night. And taking risks. And taking risks and yes. believing in myself because I'm never going to walk in a room where anyone will ever make me not feel like I'm, Come on. I'm, I'm the best thing in the room. Come on. Because I don't look at anybody as competition. I look right. at everything as a relationship, a network. What, but what box am I going to put you in? But I'm never going to be like, oh. I, I, you know, oh God, you know, whatever. I'm never negative about anything. I'm a, what, what you doing? All right. I love right. that. You know what? I might implement that into me, right. but I'm never going to be like, mm, yes. that's what we doing. You know, I and just, that's where women, I think mm. we have to come together more, especially, especially black women. I'm just going to put it out there um, because I, we've been in rooms lately and I'm like, okay, hi, how are you? What do you do? You know, like, what are you doing? And some people are, you know, like, Hey, and then you have some that are like, Ooh, you know? So I think we just need to be more receptive. We all can do, even if we're doing the same thing, we can all do it and still win. Cause you may be able to resonate with someone else that I can't, you know? And so I think that's definitely important. Like just owning who you are 
and just walking in. Well, that's you why are. hashtag I always have. Yeah. My, my hashtag is whole whole team winning. Yes. So every time people always laugh, but once I hashtag it, then they're like, oh yeah, whole team. Like Everybody. once we network, once we're in the thing, I want you nothing. I want you to be more successful than me. I don't care mm-hmm. who you are. Like I, there is no competition in me. It, that's part of me. If right. I gave you something and you took what I said and you're like, oh, you know what? Holy said that. Holy crap. I'm about to do something. I'm about to do it. And now you're doing whatever. I, I, hey, you, that's part of the team. You yeah. put me, make me look good. Make, make sure you re, right. Re put just, plug, it just plug me. Just plug me, okay? <laughs> Inspirational credits, Holly Cotton. No, for, seriously. So, life coaching. So, you, nurse and a life coach. Mm-hmm. How did you get into life coaching? So I, so after, so I'm a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. And so, um, 10 years, uh, 11 years this year. Wow. It was flying by, but come on. uh, So after, you know, so after you go through something traumatic, like cancer, you go through a survival period and some women or men, when they're going through something, they choose you, once you, once you go overcome it, you may never want to talk about it again. You're like, that's a part of my past. I don't want to deal with it. I want to pretend like it never existed. And that's great because that's how some people have to cope. So I went through that period at the beginning where I really didn't know I was in a toxic marriage. So I was like, this ain't it. And so, um, but then once I came out, you know, a couple of years later, I was like, my doctor started Mm -hmm. giving my name to new cancer patients so I had people prostate cancer breast oh, wow. cancer, like all kind of people started calling me and I was almost like this cancer advocate so they wanted to know what are the steps or how, how do you feel or whatever or when does it get better or when can I stop being scared and I was like you know and so I, I was like wow this is something I guess I'm kind of good at you know mm-hmm. I'm, I'm good at it and I always I tell people all the time you're never going to feel better. You're never going to not be scared. Every yeah. year, I'm like, mm, is this the year I'm going to get a big C is again? Maybe I got brain back. cancer yeah. this year. I don't know. Is it coming back? Is it my armpit? Right. My pinky toe? I don't know. You never know. You know, right. the life, life of a cancer survivor is utilizing whatever life you have after cancer to be the best life you can have because mm-hmm. you never know what's going to happen to you. So now you have the wake up call. Right. Most people don't get a wake up call. Think of it as, Wow, I got a wake up Second call, chance. and I now I'm yeah. not wasted at, at all ever right. again in life. I'm on the grass. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so, so once I started doing that, I was like, hmm, okay. And anything that I do, I always want to make sure that I'm an expert at it. I have credentials mm-hmm. by it. Maybe it's because I'm a nurse or whatever. Yeah. But I just feel like I don't like people just throwing stuff out and yes. oh, okay, well I do this. Well, what's your credentials or what's this? So for me, anything I do, I like to be credentialed in it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I I went into where I wanted to actually be. If I'm giving people advice, I want people to know that I'm a life coach. Right. If I'm if I'm you know doing something, I'm giving you medicine. Know that I have a master's. Right. In <laughs> right. I'm not just posting yeah, out medicine. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a CNA, even yeah. though I do. I'm a college professor, so I teach CNA and okay. nursing also. But I'm just saying like. You know, anything that I do, I want to make sure I didn't want to just be going around. I'm doing fitness videos and I'm showing you what I want to make sure that I'm a certified trainer. So whenever you're looking at my stuff, you see, oh, okay, so she is actually doing this the right way. Yeah, she I'm not going to help. I'm not going to I'm going to help you. I'm not going to, you know, allow you to hurt yourself in bad form or whatever. So that's kind of like how I started. And then, you know, and then I. Like, and I just started doing like speaking engagements and I was like, oh, wow, people want to hear what I have to say. Right. Because I talk a lot. So. Right. I'm ready. <laughs> Let me get I'm ready. ready. <laughs> Let me give y'all some of this. Let's, yeah. So, that's how that, that one came out. I love that. Um, And so college professor, so you're teaching nursing or are you still, pra- are you still I at still, the hospital? Or? No, well, so, no, girl, I, I don't okay. teach people no more. <laughs> um, so, no, so I've been. Pretty much, I've been in um, administration, nursing administration okay. for like the last ten years. So, oh, cool. um, so my main job is I still am a practicing nurse. Uh, I am a, a nurse manager okay. for a company, so that's my main job. And I know I always feel like I should quit, but it's so I I love it. I love what I do, and it gives me purpose. So. Everyone thinks that, you know, you start doing this entrepreneur life and you want to leave the nine to five. But you know what? I like all I like my nine to five. I like being a college professor. I like that I impact people and people see me. And and the other day someone was in Burlington and she's like, you know, she comes running up to me. I'm like, hey, 
And she's like, oh my God, you were my best teacher I ever had. And so like for me, mm-hmm. that gives me a purpose. So if I love doing something, why is there the push that I have to quit doing? Right. Like just and, and it's to each its own, yeah. right? You don't have to. If you, like, you can balance both, do both. That's right. what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to sit around all day doing right. nothing or just doing entrepreneur stuff or just doing right. whatever. You know, I can fit it in. My All of my careers mm-hmm. are flexible. So why not? And I'm glad you said that. And I'm glad she said it on this platform okay. because <laughs> Thank you, people feel like they have to, like, dive into one thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like you can do multiple things and still be great at multiple things. And she's displaying it. We've had multiple people displaying it. And so I want you guys to know, like you can balance more than one thing. Mm-hmm. Like you're good at more than one thing right. and that's okay. Um, So empty nester, are you an empty nester? No, not yet. Not yet. Let me just add, I want to just piggyback on that. So mm-hmm. some of the best advice that I got was from my friend. And, um, and so he actually was around when I was doing this transit, like mm-hmm. going through this whole process. And I was like, Oh, I was like, but I've been a nurse forever. Like I just don't. And he was like, first of all, being a nurse is what you do. It's not who you are. Right. Being a nurse is just a point on the giant spectrum mm. of your life. And he was like, so everything you're doing is another point, is another point, is another point for the Holly universe. So don't us. look at, yeah. So yeah. don't look at everything as this is it. Look at whatever your career, whatever your passion, whatever it is, it is constantly leading to other things. And that's what I said when I did the commencement speech um, a few weeks ago. That's what I told them. I was like, I, it, I'm, I'm a nurse, but my passion is helping people. So find things that align with your yes. passion. So for me, being a nurse wasn't just about, I didn't know it at the time. I just thought, oh, I'm going to be a nurse. It's a trade. It's a good thing. But then I started realizing once a nurse wasn't who I am, it was what I did, that all these other doors opened. So my advice is, you know, don't think of what you're doing as that's who you are. That's all you're capable of. You are capable of so many other things. You just have to realize what are the other mm-hmm. points. And then you have to, like I said, manifestation without action is pointless. Yeah. You have to have action on those thoughts. I, I sat up here. I was like, I'm going to have a billboard in Times Square. I'm going to have a billboard in Times Square. <laughs> Since last summer when we went, I was like, I'm going to have a billboard in Times Square. And then I was like, but what am I going to put on the billboard? Right. What, yeah, you can, I, yeah, you can get mm-hmm. a billboard. What you going to do? Put your Instagram thing on there or whatever. What, what are you, why, why, what impact are you making? Why should I support you? Mm-hmm. What are you selling? And I was like, I want to make sure when I'm on a billboard, it's worth it. When they yeah. put me on a billboard, it's because I have a product or I have something. And so that was my actions. Now, what am I doing? Okay. With this and my book, whatever. So whatever your action is, you can't just sit around and manifest. Oh, I'm going to have a six pack by my birthday. Come on. What's your action? Without going to the gym. Yes, or you know, okay, that right, I'm doing yes. That sacrificing. So anyway, so that's all. I just wanted to reiterate that your life is yeah. whatever universe it is that you are and everything you do is a point. Now, if you only got one point, who you going to blame? Right. And so how do you think people um, find their creativity? Like tap into more than one thing? Because I feel like people waste a lot of time. So we're wasting time watching TV, we're out, we're doing this and that. Do you think it takes a level of sacrifice? Oh, for sure. Level of sacrifice. And also, um, um, I, w- I just had someone on my show and she said, she said the, um, the push, uh, oh my God, the push of pain for the pull of possible. Oh, Pull of pain, push of possibilities. I don't know if it's push or pull. But anyway, the point mm-hmm. is, is that pain shows you possibilities. So sometimes you, uh, and mm-hmm. so I rephrase it because this is my quote. <laughs> I always say nothing motivates you like hurt feelings. Mm-hmm. So sometimes hurt feelings, you have to hurt your own feelings. So sometimes, you know, it may not be someone else that's pushing you that's saying, hey, you need to do this. Sometimes you need to look mm-hmm. in the mirror and be like, oh, my God, where, look, I let myself get your go. shit together. Yeah. Or, or, <laughs> that's or, or, yeah, or, or you're like, why, why don't I have money and savings mm-hmm. or why can't I take a trip or why are they doing that? That, sh- that should be your hurt feelings yes. right there. So you're like, you know what? Let me hurt my own feelings for a second and get my life together. Yeah. So I think for me, again, my passion is helping other people. I will tell you this, and I, I want to make sure I put, make put, this point. I'm going to put it out there. <laughs> so if you guys don't follow Jason Lobdale, Mr. Two Weeks Out on Instagram, I always attribute my 
tangent that I'm on now to, to Jason because I literally it was 2020 and I and I was I don't even know if I was following him or maybe I had just followed him but he was on a he was doing a live because mm-hmm. of course it's COVID everybody's just doing live so it was the end of the year it was 2020 and and so his live was you know he talked about something being a thing um and so he was like focus on you until the focus is on you You. and I was just like and I quote him all the time for that because I'm like god you know what that that's what I need to do so Mm -hmm. that was for me that was like a hurt feeling moment for me because I was like wow I'm really not doing nothing and I need to get it together so yeah Sometimes we have those epiphany uh, moments, like, and it's crazy because we have to hear from people we don't know, yes. or people we're, we're watching, and we're like, you know what, they're right. We're watching them create this success in their lives, and they're thriving, and you're sitting here watching them, and you could be watching us right now and saying, I want to do that. I want to do this. Do it. Like, just do it. Like she said, you have to take action you can get all the knowledge and manifest all the things, but if you aren't taking action, it's never going to come to pass. And the thing is, too, and the other thing that I, I learned from him is is he would always talk when he was doing, because, I mean, he went, like, they're huge now, he and his wife. But um, And so he said, uh, he said, you have to be around people that show you that a thing is a thing. So a lot of times we don't know a thing is a thing until you see someone else doing it because you're so you're around people that are the same as you. So I can't be around a bunch of pigeons. I need to figure out how that eagle got up there. Come on. So when you change your mindset and you're like, wait a minute. So wait a minute. So entrepreneur is a thing. Oh, wait. So building a brand is a thing. It's a thing. So wait, I could Mm -hmm. write a book. I could be an author and this. So when you know something is a thing. Now it's like, wait a minute. Okay. So it becomes tangible. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to be around people or you have to do stuff instead of looking at twerking videos every day or doing one margarita, you know, which is great. Y'all have fun or whatever. But that same time where you are watching that kind of stuff, you could be watching other people that are doing successful things. Because that's what I want to do at nighttime. The last thing that I do before is I want something positive. So I may read something. I might look at a quote. I might do something. But I want my last thing of the Mm -hmm. night to always be something positive. And then when I wake up in the morning, I'm already, like I said, organized. What am I doing for today? What are we accomplishing today? Yeah. So easy if you, you get it together. Yeah, and it becomes <laughs> it, yeah, no, for real. it becomes a routine though. It becomes yeah. when you daily get yourself habit. in a daily habit routine, it just becomes easy for you. Um I read this book uh called The Five AM Club. Uh-huh. I love that book Um, because that book really teaches you about getting up early and just getting stuff done. And then you have the rest of your day to do what you got. But I'm never going to be in five o'clock club. I'm the the 7 a.m. club boy for them 15 hours from 7 to 11. I'm rolling. You're grinding. (laughs) But see, you don't have to grind all day, though. That's I think that's the part that people miss. Like when we say we're hustling or we say we're doing this and that, it's not like I'm going 12 hours straight and I'm going to stop with no water, no drink, like nothing. I'm chilling. No, like that three just hour that, log, a two hour yeah, log. I'm whatever, putting yeah. in work during these periods of time. Uninterrupted. Uninterrupted. That's the key to it. Not scrolling on your phone. Yeah, because you yeah. zone out. And, and I have a girlfriend. I was telling her about that too. Cause she's always, she's like, oh God, I feel so overwhelmed. First of all, your friend has a best selling book called Day One. <laughs> like how to, that organize, how to organize your goals. <laughs> and I'm like, I said, if you read your friend's mm-hmm. book, you would know. And so I told her, I said, look at your daily habits. And she's always, all over the place. She's doing this. She's doing that. She's ripping and running. And like, she has no structure in her mm-hmm. day. So I said, of course, you're going to have an unproductive day. Right. And I told her, I said, every morning I eat the same thing. I get up in the morning. I eat a protein waffle and two uh, protein waffle with almond butter and blueberries and two strips of turkey bacon. Mm-hmm. And so she was like, oh my God, I would hate that. She's like, I get so bored with it. I said, yes. I said, but if you look at all the successful people, it's, look it's at Facebook, point. look at Tesla, look at, I won't say all the names, but mm-hmm. you know, look at all of those people that are successful. Apple, you know, Apple founder, what do they say? They wear the same things every day. They do the same things every day because what happens is you spend so much time 
of your imagination and your imaginative and your creative side worrying about what I'm going to eat today, what I'm going to wear today, what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And you spend so much time doing that, that you could have been doing something creative yeah. or productive or Very true. whatever it is that you need to do where you're not sinking. <laughs> right. Know? But So for me, I already know I'm going I'm to have the same thing. Do my to-do list, get, do what I got to do, go straight, do whatever. I might get on my bike and I'm eating the same thing for breakfast. And now that gives me all of this thought process of what are the creative things that I can do. So tapping into your creative mind is like one of the best things I could have ever done. Yeah. Um, I think because I grew up to where, you know, it's like, go to school, do this, do that. Mm-hmm. So you always have this plan, but it's like, you need time to school think mentality. the old school mentality of just Get a job and work until you die, right? right. Don't do anything Thank else. God. Thank God you changed that mentality. Right. You still fine and got time. <laughs> right? I'm like, uh-uh, this ain't it. Right. Like, you want to travel, you want to do things. And so I think opening your mind to different things just mm-hmm. allows you to create those moments. And to create things like this, I mean... God, she's balancing a lot. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard all the it credentials seem here. Like a lot till other people say it's until a lot. she says it out loud, and then it's like, well, I am kind of doing a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. lot. Right here's right here. She's doing a great job at it, y'all. She looks good. She looks great. She's doing a great job. Um, I wanted to get into you. Are you, are you an empty nester? You still have kids oh, at home? Yes. So no, I do have. A, I, my daughter is still at home. Okay, how old is your daughter? 18. Oh, she's 18. Mm-hmm. She's doing her own thing. Well, like no, she, okay. So yes and no. So, mm-hmm. um, so I literally, my son is 23 and my daughter's 18. And, okay. eight, and so my son literally just moved out when we sold our okay. house. So I ain't been an empty nest. Yes, like, no, I no. Until they leave, I'm not an empty <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not. No. I because I, I still feel like I have to take care of them. And here, and, and, and for, you do. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah. for me, I, I love being a mom because mm-hmm. for, for me, and you'll see any, any of my posts, I always mm-hmm. say the only job I care about is being a mom. Like all of these, I did an appreciation post for my daughter last night because you can have all this. That's why you have so many successful people. Like, um, the guy, the dancer guy, he, you, you kill yourself, you know, all I these know. people are hanging themselves, overdosing, doing this because you can have all the money in the world and you feel lonely. You don't have that support yeah. circle. That's what, that's what's important to me. Yeah. So I don't care about all this other stuff. It's great. This is like in Louisiana, Louisiana, we call that lawn yap. That's just extra. <laughs> like I love all the lawn yap yeah, that comes the with family it. And the but kids, for yeah. me, yeah, but for me, the actual being able to show my kids, Hey, you're never too old to do something. Hey, whatever mom says I'm going to do. They, my kids, I'll tell, I, like, I could be like right now, you know what? I want, I think I'm gonna be a pilot. My kids won't blink. They'll, they'll, they will know that I will do it. Oh wow! And for I me love to that. Leave that with them to know that they can do, do whatever. Anything. We Come were on, that's so powerful. Yes, we were literally in Times Square, and we, I brought them, and I was like, I looked around, I said, you know what? I'm gonna get on one of these billboards. I was like, watch, I'm gonna come in Times Square. I'm gonna be on the billboard. They didn't doubt for a second. And whenever oh, I oh, finally oh, had I my moment, that. they were all like, we we never doubted it. We knew you. Wow. We were just waiting on you to get it done. That's amazing. And that's something amazing that you've left with them, like the ability to know, like, hey, I can do anything. My mom did it. I can do it. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's something that y'all all should take away. Um, I see kids, um, cause I'm a counselor too. And mm-hmm. I see kids and, and they're like telling me all this stuff. Well, my mom wants me to be, or my dad, I'm like, well, what do you want to be? Right. Like those are the things. And so I think that really fosters that, mm-hmm. like you can do anything you want to do. What, what do you want to do? Right. I love that. And love I'll bring that. it back to them. Cause they don't want to be like me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and my daughter's like, I don't you do and I'm like I don't give a crap what you do just right. make sure you're great at whatever it is that you choose right to do. and that's, that's what's most important and, right. and that's what's most important so how's your relationship now with their dad like how are y'all navigating that 17 years y'all are like friends though no no, no I actually like I just hey boy hey. I, have a, I have a meme in my phone that's so Come funny on. I want to post it and it said what is my biggest op my baby daddy oh my god <laughs> No, is he hating? He's a hater. No, don't be a hater. So, you know, I'll be totally honest because yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't like to ever talk about you right. know, the negative no, con- yeah. concept. So again, you know, he he adapted to life with me as well, mm-hmm. and so I believe the version that I got of him was his way of adapting to living mm. in, in in the relationship that we had, and so um, he's not the greatest dad. 
Uh, oh, okay, and I okay. think I think an issue was that you know he struggled with with being a dad separate from being in a relationship oh. and being being the the partner. And I, a lot of people struggle yeah, with that too. Once you don't have the family, you don't know how to. Like for me, I was like, there is oh, just because we're not okay. together, I still have to be a mom. And he didn't understand that he still had to be a dad, even though we weren't a right. unit anymore. And he he had difficulty with navigating yeah. that. So you know that left a lot of resentment on me that I was left to do everything by myself as a single mom, and you became instead of a single dad an absent dad so I had a lot of resentment towards him for that and you know and then he blamed me that he was yeah I was gonna say that's usually what happens it's like well if you would have stayed or if we would have worked it out yeah, it would have been and that's what, yeah that was his you thing know, it was so, always like well you yeah. wanted to be a single mom this is what I was like okay first of all yeah a single mom and a single dad, not a single mom and an absent dad. Right. It's totally different. Because co-parenting thing. exists. Yes. And you can do it. Yes. Um, so I, I, I really hate that, but a lot of guys struggle with that. They it's do. Like, and, it's and like it's they don't want to budge, you know, they like, no, I want it this way. And right. then it affects the kids in the long run. I know. And right. I think it's also hard for him to see me being successful. Like he, he'll, he'll Without say, him. yeah, he'll yeah. say that like, you know, well, oh, well, Holly, you know, I, I'm happy for you. I wish you the best or you deserve the success or whatever. And maybe at his heel, healing phase now mm-hmm. he does. But I think it was hard for him too, because he, like I guess he thought of it as like a competition and I was oh. I was always you know whatever and I'm like listen I can't it's not a competition but I'm just whole, being who I was always designed, designed to, to be, be. you oppressed me for 17 years yeah. <laughs> and now you're watching this come up and right. it's okay <laughs> it's okay you it's you all lost. You you lost. Lost. and it happens <laughs> and it's like don't be a hater right it's okay because I know your friends are like that was your baby right. mama? Do you, it was. Do you see her? They don't want to yeah. bring it up. He, fum- he fumbled big time. <laughs> fumbled big time. <laughs> he can't recover, y'all. Right. Um, yeah. I was like, how are you going to come back from that? Uh, you can't. You can't. You can't. <laughs> That's why whoever comes after me, I'm just like, girl... Right. There was no competition. Right. Girl, Good luck with y'all. Like, have fun. Yes. You can have him. Right. Uh, been there. Um, yeah. So moving on to the, we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about okay. what's next for you. Oh, okay. That's so funny because everyone keeps asking me that. Oh, really? <laughs> so I, so every December 31st, I make a to-do list and I make short-term goals and long-term goals. And so it was so crazy because Last year, 2022, I had, I have goals and dreams. Mm-hmm. So my long-term goals, I'm, are, are those are dreams, but they're not really, cause I'm going to get it. It right. just might take a little bit longer. Yeah. So short-term goals, dreams, long-term. And so I was like, I got to the like middle of last year and I had already was like, I'd already done like half of my dream. And I was like, okay. So then that's what my friend, I, he was like, right. Cause you shooting too low. He was like, so I was like you know what so next year so I just came up with okay billboard in Times Square finish my third book and so and he was fussing at me again he was like look you're already in June mm-hmm. and you already did everything I bigger. Bigger, bigger 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 because you you just feel like sometimes it's so scary mm-hmm. but that's the good thing that's when you know that it that a dream is where you're supposed to be because it should scare you so mm-hmm. I have some things I'm working I definitely because you know I have my own podcast show yes. that's the other thing too yes and I'll have all her links <laughs> below guys so y'all can go and check her out yes. she's amazing thank you thank you so I have that so you know I would love to have um I went to the Sherry Shepard show uh, a few was it weeks ago? Maybe like two months mm-hmm. ago or something like that. They invited me out. So I went as a VIP guest and that was like a whole experience. Aww. And I was just like, mm, this I'm going to be, I'm be on I, need, show. I need a Holly Cotton <laughs> show or the HC show. I don't know. Make it, call it what you mm-hmm. want, but I need my own show. So that would be my ideal. I love, I, I love that. So that's my thing. I used to joke um, a few years ago and I was like, uh, I would say, when you guys see me with Obama in the vineyard, don't say anything. You already know. Right. And even when I saw Girls Trip, I told my friends, I, uh, and now I hadn't done anything when I saw Girls mm-hmm. Trip. And I told my friends, I was like, I said, watch, y'all are going to see me at Essence. And guess where I am this year? At Essence Come as on, a speaker, yes. as a panelist, as a... As and she's a, been on my podcast. Yeah, yes. yes. As an influencer. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, like, I didn't mm-hmm. even know. But that just shows how when you say things, 
only speak positive things in your head because your brain absorbs those things and you may not even, you know, subconsciously know that you're speaking that into your life. And the blessings will just come like this. I'm experiencing that right now. And I'm just like, hold on, wait, I said I wanted this. Oh my God, hold on. But I'm like, okay, I'm just rolling with it. So no, I definitely, um, Definitely can resonate with you on yeah. that one because um, I just started this year, so I'm like, yes, oh my god, it's coming so fast, but and that's hey. how it is. It's like yeah. it'll just open, and then now you're networking and networking mm-hmm. and networking. That's what I said. When you have when you have those vibes and that energy, you are only pulling positive stuff. Yeah. Like you can even if you come to me negative, I won't even absorb it. I'm so happy and positive. It literally does this. It does. It does. Yeah. Like it's like pew. Yeah, because that's something internal. Yes. That's what people don't, they don't realize. Like, you think you're hurting me or you're saying something to me, but that's I something that you're it. dealing with. Yeah, yeah. I don't even hear it. Like, yeah. I, and, and it's hard because, you know, sometimes people will, like, comment on my post or they'll say certain things. And, you know, old, unhealed Holly will, yeah. like, initially want to fight you. But then <laughs> but then new healing Holly is mm-hmm. like, mm, delete, right. delete delete you know it's not even worth the time or the and energy. I will tell you this yeah. my friend told me uh January 1st of this year I had a powwow I had a talk with him and I was like oh my gosh like I just I was like what do I do and he's you know he's mm-hmm. very elevated in in life and so I was like what do I do because I this is my year and he was like this is your year like I know this is your mm-hmm. year and he was like don't say no to nothing within reason right and I was like and I was like I was like hmm see that I right and when I tell you I took that advice this year Love and it. it opened up so many doors because things where I was like uh I was like you know what all right let me see what's going on yeah eh, you know what let me see yeah and that no don't say no to nothing you'll see that you will go into rooms you'll be stuck you got people I have people knowing my name that I I've been You're like, like oh wait how, how do you know me right yeah. and I've been idolizing you but you know my name. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, she, I'm doing something right. Yeah, no. You do it. Yeah. <laughs> She's doing it. She's doing it. I love it. I love that you're embracing it. And everybody needs friends like your friends. That one friend that's like, uh-uh, girl, go bigger. Or mm-hmm. he's saying, I love that. You need those people in your corner. Mm-hmm. So if, if you need to change your circle, guys, change your circle. It's okay. You're going to, as you elevate too, you're going to see people kind of slowly and then whoever's for you, they're going to stay. They're going to stay. Not everybody's meant not to go everybody. all the way to the end. Yeah. Not everybody. Um, I want to thank you so much for yeah. taking time out of your day and coming on my podcast. I'm super excited to watch the rest of your journey. Um, and guys make sure y'all go over and follow her um you want to give them your instagram sure sure oh, i'm super simple everything is very easy so instagram holly h-o-l-l-y c-o-t-t-o-n underscore tiktok same thing h-o-l-l-y c-o-t-t-o-n underscore my website is super easy www.hollycotton.com uh linkedin holly cotton i have a name that you can remember yes and that's why when i introduce myself i always say first name last name because there's so many people uh with your first name i want people to know when you hear holly cotton oh holly cotton i know her yeah yeah (laughs) yeah because there's a ton of hollies a ton of courtney you know you you gotta go i go first last name yeah no that for real and i say mine with two t's my last name because that's easy to remember yes um i'll have her IG on the screen. The editor will have it on the screen for you guys so y'all can go and follow her. Um, This episode will also be up on her um, podcast. You guys can go check it out on either platform. Make sure y'all are following and just share, guys. Share the word. Spread the word. Uh, Is there a last word you want to leave with the people? Um, So I... Hmm, so many things, but I'll just say this in my email signature. I always, I have my name and then I have a quote that says life is short, live it. So make sure you are living the life that you deserve because only you can create it. So I love it. And on that note, we're going to end and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Well, guys, that concludes our episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the allow yourself grace podcast. For additional information about today's episode, please click the link in the show notes below. To learn more about our Grace Girls community and other resources we have to offer, head over to www.allowyourselfgrace.com. Until next time, Grace Girls, I love you all. Be blessed and continue to strive for success.